Welcome to another short sermon. <laughs> we are concluding our four-part series on women prophets of scripture with Anna from Luke's chapter 2. Well, Anna appears in Luke 2 near the end of that chapter almost as a punctuation mark, very insignificant to the naked eye. The attention near the end of that chapter as Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to be presented in the temple is on Simeon. Simeon is of, has been told by the Holy Spirit that he will not die until he has seen the Messiah. So as Mary and Joseph enter with the child uh, 40 days after Jesus' birth, which is the period of ritual purification for Mary following the birth process, uh, Simeon recognizes who Jesus is and he uh, lets loose a torrent of praise uh, which has been translated into song in our beautiful service of Compline or night prayer. Simeon's song concludes, My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. So Simeon is now prepared to die. But right after this, the uh, Luke inserts almost as an afterthought, a bit about Anna. And so here's how those verses read, just two, three verses at the near the end of Luke 2. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple and with fasting and prayer, worshiping night and day and coming up to them, Mary and Joseph, at that very moment. In other words, when they entered the temple, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him, of Jesus, to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel. So what is the significance that we can glean from these verses? First of all, Anna uh, seems at first to be a counterpart to Simeon. They're both elderly. They're both very pious. They're both there in the temple when Mary and Joseph enter with the child. But Simeon is focused on his death. For him, it's all over. He has seen the Messiah and now he's prepared to die. But Anna wants to live. She wants to continue to prophesy. She, in fact, is the, prof the prophet of the future. She begins to give thanks to God for all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem, meaning all those people then and all of us now and all of us who will come. So she prophesies boldly and fearlessly. Women were expected to remain quiet, but not Anna. The strange thing about this is that we do not actually have her words. We have a lot of words from Simeon, but not the specific words that Anna used as she uh, spoke of Jesus in this way. So some of the wonderful uh, miniatures from medieval art in the illuminated manuscripts do uh, show Anna with a certain implements of purification and sanctification. They show her with a candle. They show her holding a scroll, which Luke doesn't tell us she had, but which indicates her prophecy because the, prophets, the, uh, the words of the great prophets were written, of course, into scrolls. So Anna is holding a scroll in some of these miniatures. It's blank. Others have interpolated words that she might have spoken. But the message for us is that we are called to prophesy using our own words. So taking our cue from Anna, we do not want to remain silent. We want to speak of what we know of the Messiah. And so while Anna's words are lost to history and scripture, we can insert our own words of prophetic longing for those things that we desire. So that is the message of Anna in Luke 2, and this concludes our series on women prophets of scripture. Thank you for spending this time with me to uh, see these remarkable women from a uh, deeper perspective and to understand more fully the uh, calling that they are offering us in our lives of faith. Peace be with you.